people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. Holi is one of the most popular festivals in India. The event referred to as the Festival of Colours symbolises the triumph of good over evil. To celebrate the festival, people daub each other in colours and dance with joy to mark the occasion. It is indeed a sight to behold when Holi is celebrated in Bridge region of Uttar Pradesh. Let's take a look at how the Festival of Colours was celebrated all across the country. Smeared in colours, thousands of people in the bridge region of Uttar Pradesh were seen grooving and dancing to the beats of folk music as they celebrated the Festival of Colours Holi. Consisting of religious towns like Mathura, Vrindavan and Barsana, the bridge region is believed to be the birthplace of Lord Krishna where he spent most of his childhood. In this region, Holi is a weekly affair while in the rest of the country, it is celebrated just for one day. People from different parts of the country also throng the bridge region during this time to celebrate the occasion. after COVID, we are enjoying the Tharoli and Thousands of devotees gathered in the holy town of Mathura to play the festival of colors with laddus, a popular North Indian sweet. Devotees smeared in different colors collected laddus, danced and sang as they soaked themselves in the festive spirits. Laddu Holi marks the beginning of the festival celebrations. As part of the ritual, laddus are flung at devotees from the temple's terrace and they in turn compete with each other to catch the holy offering. It is believed that Lord Krishna visited Barsana to play holy. While in Gokul village, men and women use chadi to play holy and celebrate the occasion. The holy celebration by widows at the historic Gopina temple in Vrindavan is another beautiful tradition that challenges the age-old taboo which bars women from participating in festivals. Thousands of widows wearing white saris get covered in vibrant hues of yellow, pink and blue as the jovial women smear each other with coloured powders and flowers. Another unique and bizarre manner of celebrating Holi is observed in Varanasi city of Uttar Pradesh where devotees gather at Ganga river bank and smear pyre ashes on each other. It is believed that the tradition of the festival started when Shiva played holy with pyre ashes with his aids to celebrate the return of his wife goddess Parvati. This is the most important holy 
यहाँ पे आप कहीं पे भी नहीं देखेंगे पूरे भारतवर्ष या पूरे विश्व में कि शमशान घाट पे होली खेली जाती है बनारस की आ, अपने आप की होली है यहाँ पे हर जगह से लोग आते हैं चिता से भस्म निकाल के जलते हुए चिता के साथ भी खेला जाता है जो लोग दास संस्कार के लिए आते हैं उनके साथ भी खेला जाता है और कोई किसी भी प्रकार का भेदभाव नहीं कोई किसी से भी बुरा नहीं कुछ भी नहीं मानता है बहुत ही भव्य रूप से बसम और चिता बसम की होली महाशमशान में यहाँ बनाई जाती है और हर साल ये परंपरा चलती हुई आ रही है हम सब भक्तजन यहाँ पे हर साल एक बार इस इंतजार करते हैं ताकि यहाँ पे होली खेल पाए Celebrated at the onset of spring, Holi holds a great mythological importance that is triumph of good over evil. It is also associated with the eternal love of Krishna and his consort Radha and a riot of colors. India is a country where Sufism has not just flourished but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. Even today, the teachings of these saints are the guiding lights for many. So today, in our episode of My India, we'll take you to one such shrine in Ahmedabad, whose history and architecture itself gives out a loud message of religious harmony. This is the Mausoleum of Sarkej Rosa. A 572-year-old architectural marvel carrying within rich anecdotes of Sufism. This 15th-century marvel is dedicated to the memory of Ahmed Shah First's advisor, Ahmed Khattu Ganj Baksh. This rosa is a cluster of building which houses the mausoleums of Mahmud Begeda, along with Ahmed Khattu Ganj Baksh and others. This place has a cheery communal feel with people of different religious communities visiting this shrine to pay their obeisance to the Sufi saint. Sarkej Roja is a Hindu-Muslim community harmony, a very big stage, a very big platform. You will not be aware of this, that after being a Muslim Muslim monument, it will be a time of the 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 time. जो फेस्टिवल होता है उसको सेलिब्रेट किया जाता है जो गांव के एतराफ के लोग हैं जो सरखेज रोजा के एतराफ में लोते हैं जो नॉन मुस्लिम्स हैं वो सरखेज रोजा की दरगाह को अपने कुल देवता यानी अपने देवता मानते हैं और वहाँ पे आते हैं अपनी मन्नतें मानते हैं और अपनी मुरादें पूरी करते हैं और खास करके जन्माष्टमी के मौके पर ये लोग आके सरखेज रोजा के अंदर अपने अपने तरीके से अपनी रिचुअलिटी से वो जन्माष्टमी को सेलिब्रेट करते हैं The complex of this rosa is spread over 72 acres with beautiful architectural pieces and a lake. It was used as a getaway by many rulers of Ahmedabad. Now this place is visited by people not just from the city but from around the state as well. for admiring its beautiful architecture and praying to the saint ऐसे यहां हिंदू आते हैं मुस्लिम आते हैं सिख हर धर्म का इंसान यहां आता हैगा वो यहां अपना अकीदा लेके आता है कि भाई कुछ सूफी के पास जाएंगे कुछ सीखने मिलेगा और उसकी जो भी जायज तमन्ना है वो आप अल्लाह से अर्ज करके ना उसको अता करवाते हैं इट इज बिलीव दैट सेंट फुलफिल्स द विशेस ऑफ ऑल एंड नोबडी रिटर्न्स एम्प्टी हैंडेड फ्रॉम हियर And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Locals in New Delhi participated in a cycling event to promote a healthy lifestyle ahead of International Women's Day. Participants, which included both men and women, were dressed in purple t-shirts and rode on the streets of New Delhi as a part of the event which was organized by the Delhi government to promote gender equality and a healthy lifestyle. On behalf of the United Nations in India, it's a, it's a real honor and pleasure to be here today with the Delhi uh, government, and in particular uh, UNESCO and, and UN Environment Program, and with such uh, amazing women uh, celebrities and, and leaders, and all of the young people and uh, people of different ages here cycling. I uh, wanted just to, to share a couple messages of the International Women's Day. First, this is celebrating that, as the UN Secretary General has said, gender equality is the unfinished business of our time. It is the best way to achieve our collective aspirations. Two, we have to address climate change. 
Meanwhile, social activists and philanthropists came together to participate in a car and scooter rally to spread awareness about acid attacks on women in eastern Bhuvaneshwar city. The participants decorated cars with cutouts and posters with information on acid attacks and rode bikes decorated with pink balloons during the event. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken got a taste of India's famous auto rickshaws as he was driven around by the US Embassy officials in New Delhi. In a video released on social media by the embassy, Blinken can be seen cruising in style in the AutoCAD and inquiring about the tuk-tuk's mileage. He also met staff of the embassy from around the country and also interacted with the civil society groups before leaving India. Blinken attended the group of 20 foreign ministers gathering in Indian capital earlier this week and met his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov in person for the first time since Russian forces invaded Ukraine a year ago. The Women's Premier League promises to kick-start a new era in the sports as players across India gear up for the inaugural tournament with great enthusiasm, hoping it throws a much-awaited spotlight on women's cricket and encourages young girls to pick up a bat or ball. While male players have long enjoyed rock star status in the cricket-mad country, their female counterparts have had to fight hard to be taken seriously. मेंस क्रिकेट शुरू हो रहा है मतलब ये बहुत अच्छी बात इसलिए है क्योंकि अप, लोग अपनी लड़कियों को गर्ल्स को ज्यादातर क्रिकेट या कोई सा भी गेम में बेचते नहीं थे अभी लोग क्या कहते हैं मेंस का क्रिकेट देखते थे टीवी में तो मेंस का जैसे-जैसे क्रिकेट देखते थे अभी वुमेंस का भी देखेंगे तो उन्हें पता लगेगा कि क्या कहते हैं लड़कियां मतलब अभी लड़कों से कम नहीं है मतलब लड़कियों का भी एक स्टैंडर्ड बन चुका है क्रिकेट में और वो अपनी लड़कियों को ज्यादा से ज्यादा क्रिकेट में इन्वॉल्व करना चाहेंगे तो बहुत अच्छा है कि वुमेंस के लिए एक प्लेटफार्म बहुत अच्छा है वुमेंस आईपीएल their struggle has finally started yielding results, however, and the 15 years after launch of Indian Premier League IPL, a full-fledged women's T20 tournament will get underway. Excitement at earning potential for leading players in the WPL comes tempered with concerns at a replication of India's already overweening power in the men's game. The five-team WPL, which features three teams owned by Indian Premier League franchises, will be played between March 4th to 26th in two venues in around Mumbai. Rising above caste and religious barriers, the people in Rampur city of Himachal Pradesh have become testimony to the interfaith harmony the country has embraced for generations. Recently, the Thakur Satyanarayan Kapuria Temple allowed a Muslim wedding to be performed in its premises with all the Islamic rituals. Take a look. India is globally renowned for its multi-religious demography. Every individual in the country is bestowed upon with the right to freedom of religion as per their personal beliefs. The celebration of the unity and diversity could be witnessed at all nooks and corners of the country. One such celebration was seen in the Rampur city of Himanchal Pradesh, where a Muslim wedding was solemnized in a Hindu temple. I सत्यनारायण मंदिर परिसर रामपुर में करवाया है जिसको करवाने के लिए मेरे पूरे शहर के निवासियों ने मेरे भाईचारे को निभाते हुए वो अपना पूरा सहयोग दिया है इसके अलावा विश्व हिंदू परिषद वो साहिब जितने भी लोग थे उन्होंने बढ़ चढ़ कर इसमें हिस्सा लिया और भाईचारे का एक संदेश रामपुर की जनता ने रामपुर के इलाके की जनता ने लोगों के बीच ये दिया है the ceremony was performed in accordance with Islamic rituals in presence of a Malvi. A unique mix of Hindu and Islamic traditions were at play. Making it a grand celebration of brotherhood and communal harmony, both Muslim and Hindu communities attended the ceremony and showered blessings on the newly wed couple. ये जो विवाह है, ये कार्यक्रम जो मंदिर परिसर में हुआ है, और उन्होंने भी जो है बड़ी शुद्धताई से और पूरे खानपान में शुद्धता रखते हुए बिना जो है अपने मीट वगैरह के ये कार्यक्रम और बड़ी शुद्धताई से किया है और उन्होंने अपने जो धार्मिक कार्यक्रम उनका निकाह का रहता है वो उन्होंने अपने हिसाब से किया है तो ये एक अपने आप में एक सद्भावना का जो एक बहुत बड़ा उदाहरण रामपुर इस रामपुर में स्थित इस परिसर में हुआ है जो एक अपने आप में सबके लिए एक मिसाल है 
कि सद्भावना का एक सद्भावना का संदेश देता है और दूसरा के जो सनातन का सबको अपने अपने साथ मिलाने का अपने अंदर समावेश करने का जो है एक बहुत बड़ा उदाहरण देखने को मिला है Events like these are an accurate reflection of the true Indian culture which combines religious convictions, customs and a vibrant populace. And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. A total of 100,000 lit candles illuminated the Thai temple in Pathum Thani. honoring buddha on makhabuka day for the first time since the two year hiatus due to the covid-19 pandemic the makya temple has fully opened for thousands of worshipers dressed in white attire and monks to participate in the ritual ceremony uh ha ta suwat wan ni paman 3 tum 3 tum ka kyu suwat hai dai krob nai wan ni wat wa thamma gai ko mi ayu krob 53 pi doi และปีนี้ถือว่าเป็นพิเศษก็คือหลังจากที่เราล็อกดาวน์ปิดวัดมา 2-3 ปีเนื่องจากสถานการณ์โควิดปีนี้ปีแรกที่เราเปิดรับสาธุชนรวมทั้งคณะสงฆ์ทั้งในและต่างประเทศเข้ามาร่วมกิจกรรมในวันมาฆบูชาแบบเต็มรูปแบบ 2,000 monks from across Asia joined the event lighting up 100,000 candles the devotees also expressed their feeling about being at the actual event Makabuka Day commemorates the day when 1250 monks gathered to be ordained by the Buddha more than 2500 years ago. The Washoku World Championship was recently held in Tokyo city of Japan. This was the 10th edition of the event which aims to take Japanese cuisine to new heights. A total of 139 chefs applied for this competition out of which six chefs cleared the preliminary rounds and progressed towards the finals the washoku world challenge was organized with the support of ministry of agriculture forestry and fisheries of japan in order to promote japanese cuisine and take it to foreign countries The theme of this year's competition was dashi, which literally translated to broth. Dashi or broth is an important component to enhance the flavor of Japanese dishes. For the final competition, contestants have prepared five serving appetizers, which are to be cooked using traditional Japanese eight-inch plates. The cooking time is 120 minutes. The judges examined the taste of dashi along with presentation of the dishes. After returning to their countries, these chefs will introduce washoku to their homelands which will help in spreading the glory of Japanese cuisine. Mexican night skies lit up with colorful firework displays during Tultepec annual fireworks festival. Spectators watched elaborate rotating displays of traditional fireworks during the celebrations. Es algo que nos han heredado nuestros padres, bueno, mi abuelo, mi padre, todo lo que nos han heredado. Para mí es un honor trabajar esto. Trabajar la pólvora es mi pasión. Ves mi vida entera este trabajo, la verdad. Y te enorgullece. Me enorgullece ser pirotécnico porque me enorgullece sacarle una sonrisa a la gente al ver mi trabajo. Every year residents of Tultepec celebrate the patron saint of fireworks, San Juan de Dios, with a week-long festival. Working with fireworks is a tradition that is passed down through generations, said fireworks artisan Arturo Avila. Japanese global motorbike giant Yamaha Motors is trying to be inclusive in its employment procedure as 90% of annual sales of Yamaha comes from foreign countries. Yamaha tries to enroll employees from different nations and genders in its firm. Yamaha Motors Mirai is the name of the entire company. The word Mirai means future. Yamaha also aims to employ the especially abled and thus help in creating a better society. 
とヤマハモーターミライはですね、えー、まあヤマハ発動機の特例子会社ということで、えー、2015年に設立された会社です、えー、みんなの未来を、えー、一緒に作っていこう障害者も健常者も関係ないっていうことでで今回理念を作りましたと社員が全部で59名、えー、うち障害のある方が36名、えー、おります The Japanese motorbike giant is transforming to a new global giant with diversified employment as one of its features. Moving on, Indian economy is on an upturn. Most of the sectors have started performing well after recovering from the pandemic halt. Both e commerce and traditional retail players have started blooming with the growth of the industry, witnessing increased consumer demands, disposable income, efficient logistics, and advanced technology. We have a report. With the economy successfully rebounding from the pandemic and its after effects, Indian consumers have hit the markets. From clothing to accessories, food to beverage, premium is the dominant word on the retail horizon. And both e commerce and traditional retail players are vying for a piece of the pie. India is now the world's fifth largest destination for retail. The growth of the industry is driven by increased consumer demands, disposable income, efficient logistics. And advanced technology. Modern retailing has entered the retail market in India in the form of shopping centers, multiplex malls, and complex buildings that provide shopping, dining, and entertainment under one roof. Indian consumer purchasing power is on the rise, and retail sales in Indian malls are expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 29% from 2022 to 2028. To top 39 billion USD by financial year 2028. Increased footfall led to space expansion in India by domestic and international retailers, resulting in a 5% increase in leasing activity to 2.43 million square feet in July to December of 2022.、Uh, many of them don't necessarily come every time to the store to buy the material. Uh, we have an app,、uh, we do a delivery, they can see the quantities, they can see the prices,、uh, they can track their orders. So, we try and service them. So, that portion is completely、uh, you know, driven by e commerce or online. India's retail sector is set to experience a boom due to an unprecedented increase in domestic product consumption. The industry is on track to grow at a rate of 9% over 2019 to 2030, from 779 billion USD in 2019 to 1,407 billion USD by 2026. The industry is expected to cross 1.8 trillion USD by 2030. E commerce has also gained significant traction in recent years. E commerce has reduced the upfront cost of traditional stores. Provided access to a larger clientele base and has given wider space for visual merchandising through online publishing. The government's initiative, Government e Marketplace, GEM, has fulfilled 12.28 million orders worth 40.97 billion USD from 5.44 million recorded sellers and service providers. GEM started in 2016. Initially, there were some、uh, you know, hiccups, but it came out very, very well. And people have definitely helped a lot. You know, it's really, really streamlined, streamlined the entire system for buying and selling for government. It's become more transparency. India's retail sector is experiencing increasingly larger investments as well, with 4.11 billion USD in foreign direct investment between April of 2000 to June of 2022. Recent large investments include Google expanding its cloud infrastructure in India, taking a 3.81 lakh square foot data center on lease in Mumbai, Flipkart opening a logistics arm for other e commerce firms, and Keystone Realtors signing agreements to jointly develop a 1.5 acre plot in Mumbai's Mahim. The Indian retail industry has the potential to generate a huge number of jobs. As per a recent NASCOM report, Indian retail will add more than 25 million jobs by financial year 2030. With many milestones already achieved, 
and with many more in the near horizon. India looks forward to becoming the global retail hub, further propelling Brand India. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host Lipakshi and it's goodbye from the entire production team.